Imagine founding a business and then being let go once it was established. Embarrassing, right? Well, it actually was like that for a few of the names you might recognize in this video. Who knew somebody could steal your brainchild and make it their own? Life's not fair when it comes to the cutthroat world of business and entrepreneurship. If you didn't know founders could be fired from their own companies, you're in for a surprise. When you first start a business, you have high expectations about how far you can take it. But it isn't always the case, especially when venture capital is involved. Sometimes it's because another person is better suited to run the business. Sometimes it's due to a clash between your vision for the business and its course. And sometimes it's because you simply committed too many errors. Which means that even if you created a business, you might not always be the boss. Unfortunately, a few well-known entrepreneurs and inventors have learned this the hard way by having their businesses taken away from them. Without further ado, let's look at some of the founders who were fired from their own companies. Sandy Lerner An early investor in Cisco, Sandy Lerner left the business after losing control to a management team led by Don Valentin of Sequoia Capital. Sandy Lerner was one of Cisco's co-founders. Eventually, just after Cisco went public in 1990, she was let go. At this time, Cisco is valued at about $140 billion. Since Valentine was the one who fired her, Lerner said in an article that she was too naive to accept his $2.6 million investment for 30% of the business. <laughs> yep, she learned the hard way that sometimes an investor can be your biggest foe. Noah Glass One of Twitter's co-founders, Noah Glass, is credited with coming up with the company's name but he's also the unmentioned co-founder. It's because he was forced to leave the business in 2006. In 2011, Glass admitted that initially he found it tough to reconcile with being removed from Twitter history. After all, the term Twitter is credited to Noah Glass. He stated years after his firing that he knew the rationale for it, despite the fact that no specific explanation had been made public. He still has, quote, I started this in his Twitter bio. Jack Dorsey Another Twitter guy, really? Twitter was established in 2006 by Jack Dorsey, Evan Williams, Biz Stone, and Noah Glass. Dorsey assumed the role of CEO in the company's early years, but it didn't take long for talk to start regarding his bad management style, lack of communication with the board, and failure to solve the company's frequently malfunctioning servers. Co-founder Evan Williams, who served as the company's chairman and key investor, fired Dorsey in 2008. The stated reason for Jack Dorsey's termination seems more appropriate for a 19-year-old Taco Bell part-time worker than for the founder and CEO of a $20 billion valued firm. Yup, he was fired from Twitter in 2008 after it was revealed that Dorsey was spending more time pursuing his interests in fashion design and yoga than managing the platform. But as fate would have it, he came back to Twitter in 2011 as executive chairman until finally cutting all ties in 2022. Mark Eberhard You probably don't know that this guy was the founder of Tesla, and Elon Musk fired him. In 2003, Tesla was co-founded by Martin Eberhard. He served as CEO until 2007, when Elon Musk, the company's chairman and principal investor, informed him that Michael Marx, an early investor, would take over as CEO. Before deciding to finally replace him, the board reportedly held a meeting without Eberhard. Musk's obvious mistrust in Eberhard as CEO was the primary factor in his dismissal. Hmm, typical Musk behavior, no? Travis Kalanick We all watched in horror as more and more Uber controversies emerged throughout 2017. The list includes anything from claims of sexual harassment to accidents involving self-driving cars and lawsuits against Google. In order to start the process of mending the company's tarnished reputation, Kalanick was requested to retire in 2017, after cultivating a workplace culture notorious for frat boys and out-of-control parties. The well-publicized sexual harassment allegations that started coming out of Uber Technologies Inc. in 2017 caused its CEO and founder Travis Kalanick to resign. Uber was started by Kalanick in 2009, and by 2017 it was projected to be worth $70 billion. The commotion started when an ex-Uber worker published a blog post detailing sexual harassment and gender discrimination that had been occurring at the business. There have been allegations that Travis Kalanick was aware of the sexual misbehavior and harassment, but did nothing about it. Phew, good riddance. Jerry Yang Remember Yahoo? You kids probably don't. After rejecting a takeover offer from Microsoft, 
Jerry Yang, the co-founder of Yahoo, gave up his post as CEO in 2008 and went back to being chief Yahoo. But it wasn't until four years later that Yang completely left the company because he opposed the company's shareholders' plans to put it up for sale. In 1994, the internet directory was launched by Yang and co-founder David Philo. Yang saw Yahoo's growth throughout the 2000s, watching the company's value increase to around $22 billion. But eventually, the company was in turmoil due to Google's dominance, and Yang came under fire for rejecting Microsoft's bid to buy Yahoo for $44.6 billion. Yang was compelled to leave his job in 2009 as a result of that and several leadership changes. He was on Yahoo's board of directors until 2012, when he formally severed his links to the organization. Andrew Mason He's a good model to follow if you want to leave your firm in a memorable fashion. Mason has earned recognition for penning one of the best CEO resignation letters in history. Mason founded Groupon in 2006, and in 2010, the business generated more than $800 million in revenue. Groupon went ahead with its IPO after rejecting a $5.3 billion takeover bid from Google. But as the stock price dropped to $2.93, everyone realized that adjustments needed to be made. Mason admitted fault for the business's dire financial situation, and upon his dismissal, sent this message to his staff. I've made the decision to spend more time with my family after serving as the CEO of Groupon for four and a half demanding and fantastic years. Just kidding, I was fired today. Since then, Mason has published the seven-song motivational business CD, Hardly Working. David Nealman. David Nealman, the founding CEO of JetBlue and a former employee of Southwest Airlines, established the airline in 1999. One of the few airlines to turn a profit in the years after September 11, 2001, was JetBlue. But that's up until 2007, when sales were severely hampered by dependability worries. The corporation went through ups and downs. Soon after, Nealman was forced out of his role as leader, and David Barger took over. Nealman started Azul Brazilian Airlines the next year. The historic JetBlue incident that happened on February 14, 2007 was the last straw after a lot of highs and lows. The low-cost carrier miscalculated the storm's intensity when it hit the East Coast, and instead of canceling its flights early like other carriers did, it made the incorrect assumption that the storm would pass. More than 1,000 JetBlue passengers were left stranded as a result of this bad choice, and the issue lingered for five days leading to poor customer service and tense interactions between staff and passengers. Nealman responded by telling the media that he was, quote, humiliated and mortified, but it wasn't enough to convince him to stay on board. Shortly after, the corporation fired him. Sean Rad. This guy founded Tinder, then turned out to have dismissed sexual harassment claims in his own company. In 2014, Rad was let go after co-founder and former vice president of marketing, Whitney Wolf, publicly accused CMO Justin Mateen of sexual harassment. She claims that Mateen demoted her from co-founder and called her derogatory names. In the case, Rad was cited for allegedly disregarding Wolf's complaints and threatening to fire her if she didn't accept their decision. Toxic behavior much? Steve Jobs Did you know that the founder of Apple was fired? Steve Jobs was well known for his humor and intelligence, but he was also notorious for his quick temper, which cost him the position of business leader. When Apple's board determined that Jobs was too immature and young to lead the firm in the 1980s, Jobs hired Pepsi CEO John Scully as a replacement. However, Scully in 1985 persuaded the board to fire Jobs following numerous conflicts and divisions. A little more than 10 years later, the business employed Jobs again after acquiring his startup Next. He would eventually go back to Apple and become their savior. Jobs also founded Pixar, which was then known as the Graphics Group during his time away. After collaborating with Disney, Pixar saw tremendous success. And after Disney bought Pixar, Jobs became Disney's greatest shareholder. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.